You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. Here's George Foreman with Invent Health. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at Invent Help. Call Invent Help today for free information. Invent Help has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. Invent Help can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. Saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. 
Sometimes writers feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. All right, folks, good evening and happy Thursday. This is a generic show. We're on klrnradio.com, where liberty and reason still reign, where we do this thing, well, actually, I guess starting next week, it'll be every Thursday at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. Honestly, even though uh, J.D. and Stacy are coming back and bringing Game On back with them, I'm kind of sad that we're giving up Tuesdays, but I, c- I couldn't think of a better pair to give, a- give up the night, too. So. Um, but since this will be one of the last times we do a two-week, uh, two-day-a-week show, I wanted to focus most of tonight on the situation that's going on in Houston because for those of you who are have been living under a rock my co-host of course is in Texas and is uh, seeing a lot of this stuff firsthand um, so we're gonna spend most of tonight talking about that so if you don't want to hear about it you know there's other podcasts you can go listen to whichever one you want but we're, we're, we're gonna talk about what's important to us and one of the things that I wanted to make sure that that, that we bring up is the fact that that there's there's a big difference when things like this happen in places like Texas and Oklahoma than when they seem to happen pretty much anywhere else because I've I've seen truck after truck after truck from like electric com- or the the electric company up here our civil air patrols already on the way down there we've got people uh, from uh, national guard stations and everything else that have gone down there and it's not just it's not just us there's people from all of the surrounding states that are flocking in to help Texas. And it, it, it's it's interesting to watch because you're you're watching conservatism in action because we don't sit around and wring our hands and wait for the government to swoop into the rescue. We start fixing stuff, and and that's one of the things that I think drives the left crazy because they're they're used to having people sitting on their hands and whining about how bad it is. And when is the president going to help us? And why do we not have any bread on our shelves? And who's going to come get me off my roof? And then your neighbor shows up with a boat and says, "Hey, get your ass off your roof." <laughs> Yeah, it's been nothing short of amazing. I mean, um, I you just can't even believe how people have mobilized and, you know, jumped to action. Um, I have so many friends that are down there uh, that already live there that actually are victims. I have some that were lucky, and so they're out there helping um, because they were spared and they have the means to do, do, do so. There are people that have had their homes destroyed that are still doing things for other people. Um, I've got so many friends from uh, Austin area and the Dallas-Fort Worth area and the San Antonio area and even out in San Angelo and El Paso that have driven in and driven down to the coast um, and driven to Houston to with with trucks and boats and trailers full of things that are needed. Um, and I, you just... I'm one of these people that always says I hate people. Well, the last 72 hours, I love people. It's just been incredible to see. You know, one of the things that I'm enjoying seeing is social media because the funny thing about events like this is the media and the politicians of America have spent the last, I would say, going on about 20 years trying to do everything they can to divide, pigeonhole, and categorize America. And it's incidents like this 
that make us start putting things like that aside. Now, there are still some folks out there that are like, oh, my God, you're not going to help these people because they're illegal immigrants or you're not going to do this or you're not going to do that. Look, in a time of emergency, I don't care what anybody's legal status is. That can be something that gets addressed later. I don't care what the color of their skin is. And no matter how many times these people are trying to push these racial type narratives, you keep seeing pictures of Latinos, whites, blacks, all in the same boat riding around and helping people get out of the water. I mean, it's just amazing to watch because this is when you realize that America is still okay if we would just let go of the stupidity, if we could put the anger down for a second and realize that at the end of the day, we are all still Americans first. And it's incidents like this that make us remember that. What I hope is that all the people that have found that again, which sadly, most of the people that are that are involved in this right now, I don't think are the ones that have ever really forgotten it. So I don't know how much it's going to spread to elsewhere, but it's really, really nice to see. And it's nice to see that no matter how much the media tries to spin it, they can't because no matter what they say, they keep showing all these pictures of like the dude that they, well, he's a racist because he's got a Confederate flag on his boat. Really? He just pulled three black people into his boat. How racist is that? Did he hold him under the water with an oar? No, he pulled him in the boat. So don't tell me how racist they are just because they're flying a flag that you may not agree with. You know what? I don't necessarily like that flag either because I know what it represented. But that doesn't mean that somebody who is a private citizen shouldn't be allowed to fly it should they choose. Should the governments in that area, the government buildings? No, probably not. But people, who am I to tell them what flag they can fly? And who are you to talk crap about somebody because they're flying a flag that you don't like when they're out there helping people while you're standing there with a mic in your hand? Well, and I think that, you know, <laughs> the bottom line, I, I think Sandra Bullock said it best. She said there aren't politics in eight feet of water. There are human beings in eight feet of water. And the people being rescued don't care who rescues them. The people doing the rescuing don't care who they're rescuing. I mean, that everybody is all in. And uh, there's just no time for that nonsense. And I actually had a friend who has been down there. Um, you know, he he jumped in a truck with some friends and grabbed a boat and they went. And uh, he's rescued dozens of people. And he posted yesterday. I mean, he finally, like, said something he did on Facebook and said, cut the crap. Like, I'm a liberal. I don't want to hear any of your negativity right now. There are people literally dying in these waters, getting diseased in these waters. They have lost everything that they own. And there are other people out here risking their lives for it. I don't think y'all understand how sketchy it can be in these waters. And, you know, th there's just no time for your political takes and your your snarky memes. I don't want to I don't want to see any of it. And if I see it on my feet, I'm getting rid of you. And I was just like, can I stand and applaud any harder? Because I do feel like there's just been so many hot takes, and we talked about those before on Tuesday, but um, it, it's just really easy to criticize right now, and it's really easy, you know, especially on the one side, to always say, you know, Trump needs to be doing this or this needs to be doing that. And one thing that's coming up is the churches, the church thing. There's a meme spreading around right now that just makes me – so livid. It says there are 1,566 churches in Houston. They are all tax exempt. They are tax exempt so they can help the needy. Only 60, and, and not to mention the fact that that's not exactly the reason that you get tax exempt status. That's not the only reason. It's because you're helping the needy. Um, only 60, which is 4%, out of 1,566 have opened their doors to help the flood victims and the needy during Hurricane Harvey. Let that sink in for a moment. Okay, this thing has like, I think right now I'm looking at it, it has like 80,000 shares. Oh, all the ways in which that just makes me so incredibly angry. I mean, first of all, there's no way to verify that. that. That I cannot find a single source for it. Nobody that shares it can tell you where they can find out that that's true. There's no Google search or Bing search or anything like that to tell you, first of all, that there's exactly that many of churches in Houston. It varies greatly, you know, from time to time. And then also that exactly how many are doing anything. I mean, we are talking about the fact that like people don't even, first responders are are having to deal with that they don't even know where street signs are because it's hard for them to navigate areas because they don't know where street signs are. You are telling me that there is a very solid database of which churches have their doors open or not? 
BS, especially yeah. not when this started being shared, you know, Sunday night, Monday morning. No way in hell that they have any idea can get any sort of headcount on that. Do you know how many of these people are not on social media? I have been tirelessly like scavenging social media and sharing addresses and sharing places that need supplies and places I've been on an app that does um, has it works kind of like a walkie talkie it kind of turns your phone or smart or your iPad or whatever smartphone you have into into a walkie talkie and you can get on different channels and then you can tune into channels that are on there it's what the Cajun Navy has been using the Texas Navy has been using it's what even even members of um, law enforcement that are off duty and then out there rescuing are using and then they can tap in to some of the law enforcement feed in order to be able to hear, you know, about things that are going on in certain areas. If there was a shooting reported, they can tune into the law enforcement feed and see if they can find out if that's verified or not. Um, and so you're listening to the scanner. You're also trying to help with the address you're entering. I, I mean, this is what I've been doing. I've been, I've been taking addresses as I find of people saying that there's still someone that needs help. I'm entering it into the Harvey um, database, the rescue database. Um, sometimes I get it pop up where it says, yep, they're in line to be, you know, they're, they've been reported they're in line to be rescued here's their ticket number because then you can get a notification when their name when their number is crossed off meaning they were rescued and and then sometimes i would enter it in and there would be a tweet that had 580 retweets and i would enter into the harvey database re rescue database and nobody had entered it so this person is still tweeting 12 hours later or, or this tweet is being shared 12 hours later and this person has never even entered into the queue. Um, now maybe they have been able to get a hold of someone via phone or, or through text or whatever. So I'm sitting here the first time that I did that, I went, I'll just see. The first time that I did that and that person was not in there and they said they'd been on their roof for six hours, I went, there, there's no excuse. This tweet has like an 18,000 person reach. So everybody thinks everyone else is doing it. And this is where social media has been so incredible. Um, I think that it's a game changer. I think if we can make it more obvious, uh, uh, more uh, organized for future, um, you know, disasters and emergencies, um, if there can be a little bit better system maybe, and how to help people that are stranded um, or needing rescue or to get warnings out, uh, it would make it that much better. But I have no doubt that thousands of lives were saved via Twitter alone. I watched it happen. I was ecstatic to get some tweets back from people saying thank you i finally been picked up i finally just charged my phone you know i'm finally out of there you know and it just i get so emotional i would just break down every time because this just really everybody kind of everyone else and, and in the meantime everyone else is snarking on twitter and that is what twitter's for and i get it but i have been pretty dedicated in my twitter in the last five days to pretty much being only Harvey stuff, because once I realized that I could get in there and then I do have contacts on the ground in these cities, so I can use what I know from them and then put it online. And there are people asking, does anyone know where this shelter is? Or does anyone know if this shelter still needs water? And sometimes that's because there are people there with truckloads of stuff ready to deliver and they didn't know how to get it. And and unfortunately, service is not super great in that area. And um, they just don't have time to be like trying to Google and let pages load and try to find out. And even still, some of that stuff isn't on Google. Some of the reason, I mean, shelters were being moved left and right like crazy. And the only way to find out that they had been was via Twitter because things were flooding. And so they moved this one shelter that was in a Baptist church. They moved it to the high school. Then another, one, I mean, and this were happening in in, mo in minutes and they don't have the infrastructure in some of these areas that were really bad as opposed to Houston, which was pretty much on TV 24 seven. They have the city infrastructure to be able to tell you where the shelters are gonna be, how this is gonna go, which roads are closed, yada, yada, yada. That can't happen in Port Arthur. That didn't happen in Rockport. That didn't happen in Beaumont. And they don't have the personnel to be able to handle all of these things. So. Um, t Twitter was the lifeline. I mean, the city, the city of Port Arthur was tweeting saying like, hey guys, uh, we have no way to get in touch with anybody, but we need boats to Port Arthur now. And so anybody who has one, bring it, you know? And when I first saw it, it was three hours old and had seven retweets. And it was the only communication that had been put out. Then it finally got picked up by a few reporters, but that's because a lot of us started tweeting NBC News, ABC, Fox News. So finally some reporters tweeted it out, but it's just been absolutely instrumental in this whole process. And there's so much disinformation. It's very confusing. I've been trying really hard to try to research stuff before I tweet it and check with my sources in various places before I tweet it. But 
the thing that gets me about all of it, and the churches are just a small part of this, is that the the jump to criticize while people are still literally drowning and the idea that you know better and that you're going to wag your finger at anybody, anybody that is in Harris County, Jefferson County, or Nueces County that has uh, suffered far more devastation than most anyone will ever see in their entire lifetime. To think that you have any right or that you that it's even remotely appropriate to start snapping at them and wagging your finger is just inhuman. And either A, you are actually just a big fat jerk, or B, you truly don't understand the gravity of this situation. And because you're so far separated from it, you don't think it matters. And you just have, you know, kind of put up that wall. And, and still I say that's pretty big jerk move because obviously you can't, you know, you can't uh, empathize and, have, and, and, and be able to relate at all. But the churches, you know, you just never know about that kind of stuff because I know that um, a lot of times when you see what something's registered, it might be a mobile church, first of all. It might be a church that doesn't have its own building. So it might be an offsite type deal where, you know, a lot of high school and various community centers allow churches to have, you know, to, to hold worship there. Um, and then you've got, uh, you've got ministries. You've got churches that are actually only ministries. And so that doesn't mean that they're going to have some big church that's full. Then you've got the fact that, oh, I don't know, there was this little thing happening called Hurricane Harvey. And, it, you know, so much of Houston was, even if, even though there was a good chunk of homes that were spared, and I know it doesn't seem like it from some of the country, but some of the coverage, but there really were um, quite a few areas that were spared. And there were other areas that were completely underwater. What is true is that roads were shot. I mean, some of the most major roads to be able to get around that, around that city were feet underwater. So even if you're sitting fine in your neighborhood, you probably can't go anywhere. And that's kind of what happened with Joel Austin's church and in, in, in Lakewood is um, everything around it was flooded. And even though it had not been flooded, partly because there had been pre precautions taken to that building in 2001 after they had a, they had a flood. Um, but it wasn't safe to travel. And you know, you're asking about pouring people into buildings, even let's just say the buildings are safe, but everything's flooding, everything's crazy. You're asking about pouring people into buildings that are not prepared for them. They have not staged any supplies and there's no way to get them any supplies. And they're at risk of the power going out and of flooding themselves. And then if that happens, what? I mean, what do you do from there? You know, and so it's just so asinine to try to say, well, they're a church and their doors weren't open, so that means that they don't care and they're not serving God and they're frauds. It's just so juvenile. And, you know, you could see right there on every single news channel how many times that they showed someone and they're like, well, I'm a pastor at such and such church. And they're waist deep in water handing kids over into boats. I mean, don't act like that, that there wasn't the church communities in these areas were not extremely active, if not actually having a cot and a hot meal for every single person in the area when that is just not a reasonable, um, it, it was just not a reasonable thing to think they could do. So uh, that's kind of, I'll, I'll chill for a minute, but that's kind of my rant about all of that. And, and to see some of that float by on Twitter when um, so many of us are doing everything we can in all sorts of different ways to try to help people and that I, I'm sitting here working with people. I mean, I've got people that have followed me in the last several uh, last several days that are like have hashtag resistance in their thing. And we both know we won't follow each other after this. But for this time being, we're getting each other info that we can help get to other people that need it. We're um, doing our part in, in whatever way we can, you know, during the rescues in Port Arthur and even some of the rescues in Houston, we were texting the numbers of the different um, rescue boaters that had put it out there on social media to be shared, you know, texting people's addresses. We were calling Coast Guard, calling the emergency services because they d had batteries you know, that were dying and they needed to hang on to them for as long as they could and things weren't loading. And so, you know, 
left, right. I don't know what color any of these people are. Most of them, I don't know their names, but we were all coming together and organizing to try to help um, in any way we could from a keyboard. Um, in addition to, I know many of us are also doing things outside of that, but especially, you know, what we were able to do on Twitter, we were e even in that sense, that's not even the people that are being rescued and doing the rescuing, even in that sense, you know, on social media, we were, we were clicking, we were coming together, we were not caring about politics or, or what demographic anybody was. It was just, okay, here, here's another shelter. She found out that they need this, this, and this, and share that. And also, by the way, here's the address of where they can get Amazon. Amazon will be delivering by Friday. And here's the da 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 da, -da. You know, we were just, we were just going to work, basically, to help people that need help. Exactly. But that's exactly what should be going on is people putting their differences aside, coming together and helping those in need. And if not for the media continuing to try to put the, put a very terrible spin on things, I think more of that would probably be going on. And it, it, it just, you know, as much as I dislike Trump, the one thing that he has shown us is there is something that a lot of us have already known. And I don't think we real, we wanted to realize how bad it is. The disconnect between political America, media America and the rest of America, because it's there plain as day. And it's at this point, it's pretty much as plain as a nose on your face. And it's kind of scary. How, how how much the rift between the political folks, the media folks, and the rest of us has just kind of become so apparent that it's just like, oh my God, do you even realize what you're saying right now when you're putting out a, I mean, that's like, and it's same, same vein, but same, but across, uh, well, as the British would say, kind of across the pond. You know, a few, a few, what was it, about two years ago? Charlie Hebdo was attacked and the entire world like freaked out and was like in mourning and oh my god people are shooting at French people for putting up a cartoon and then of course you know we were some of the loudest voices you know we were the ones all changing our Facebook names and our Twitter names to Je suis Charlie and all that other stuff and now all of a sudden they put out a cartoon this weekend basically painting all of Texas as drowning as a bunch of people holding Nazi flags yeah, basically it said, I think it said Harvey, Harvey, uh, you know, drowned the neo-Nazis. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a lot of feels about that. Uh, and I just didn't have a lot of time to be super mad about it. But I did basically say, you know, screw you. The thing is, is that it's, it's whatever, it, it, you know, I, they do get to do that and I get that they do all sorts of sick and, and offensive things. Um, I just found it more and people were like, oh, so you're fine with it doing, uh, fine with them doing, you know, this image of, of, of Muhammad that's offensive to Muslims, but not when it's offensive to Texans. No, 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 no. I want to make it very clear. Mocking Muhammad is not the same thing as mocking people freaking dying in the water. And they still were at the time that it was published. People were still trapped in attics and homes. People were still sitting on roofs. People are, unfortunately, when we find these waters recede, especially along the Port Arthur uh, Beaumont area, there are going to be bodies in these homes. Um, and it, there were store, I mean, there were all sorts of, there were levees breaking. There were damn breaches. I mean, it was just a mess and uh people were literally hanging on for dear life and drowning and that and that was the representation it was disgusting to me on a totally different level than just some sort of offensive mocking but you know that's what they do and i have to just ignore it but i i'll be damn sure never supporting them again i won't come to their defense on anything yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, you know, I, I seem to remember a certain time back in, uh, what was it, World War One, World War Two, where we kind of marched in and saved their asses. Next time I say we let it burn. <laughs> well, I mean, I still don't think, man, you know, and they get to do this because no one's going to go kill them for it. But uh, I just, I thought it was an extremely poor taste. As was the wonderful cartoon that uh the political cartoon has put out oh yeah that one was lovely they were so proud of that when it got pulled down like within 20 minutes of them putting it out which was great. oh oh man it was it was really and then his defense 
the cartoonist defense would just got worse and worse. I was like, oh, buddy, just quit digging your heels and just say sorry, defended you. Well, actually, I was mocking the secessionist movement. OK, OK. There's a word that starts with an M and in the middle there's an F and at the end there's an earth that I'd like to call you for that because I'm not buying a load of it. But. Uh, yeah, that was they they got they wised up, though. They pulled that real quick. <laughs> Oh, no, it was just, I, I don't know. I mean, and again, you know, it's it's not the fact that they don't have the right to say things that are off that are offensive. And I understand that, you know, the Supreme Court just said that, you know, free speech doesn't protect you from becoming offended. But that doesn't mean that I don't have the same right of free speech to call you an a-hole when you do something stupid. I had to edit myself. Exactly. It... <laughs> no, that's exactly right. I, yeah. Yes. Do they get to say it? Yes. It doesn't mean that I can't be pissed off about it or tell them what I think of it. So whatever. I I just that I, I that was to me uh was even more disheartening because you know I don't I don't view Politico. Politico puts out some really liberal stuff sometimes, but in general, you know, they're they're not really they're not a far left rag. Um, they're not, uh, I, they're, they're a little more respectable. Even some of the opinion pieces written, you know, they don't just publish a whole lot of garbage. Uh, they do here or there. I mean, it does slip through. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it, it's not a slate or a salon, in other words. But, um, and I know a lot of people on the far, like, that are really far right will say, yes, it is. They're all the same unless it's Breitbart. It's nothing. But um, I don't agree. So I guess with political. Politico for me, it was just really disappointing. It was really disappointing that they decided that while the tragedy was still happening, which I understand that in the in that nationally people didn't really know. They thought the rains came down, the flooding rose, the rains have stopped, some of it has receded. Um, we see that Houston's getting help, so there we go. And they had no idea that Harvey made a second landfall and that it absolutely put 85% of Port Arthur underwater, a town with 55,000 people that had pretty much no warning. And, um, you know, I, and that that was the case, you know, people kind of, we watched it landfall in Rockport and then it moved to Houston. So we forgot about it and you forgot about the devastation in Rockport and Port Aransas and Corpus Christi, um, which are, <laughs> I have so many friends that have homes in those areas and it is, it looks, you know, a lot of times hurricanes, um, depending on their strength, it can be a lot of flooding and a lot of water damage and then some wind damage and especially to like windows and, and roofs and stuff. And a lot of these places board them all up. But um, this looks like tornadoes. This just looks like the biggest tornado came through and ripped up an entire area of the coastline. It is in shambles, just completely in shambles. And I mean, now we know, I mean, it was a Cat 4 that hit directly onto Rockport, Texas. But the drama really built around Houston. And then of course, I mean, it was insane. It was so dangerous. It was um, uh, so horrifying to watch, terrifying to watch as those waters rose and my family that's there and what they were going to do. And, um, you know, and then it just sat on Houston and saturated and saturated and saturated that already flooding area. So I get why most people may not really remember or also don't know about how much of these other areas were affected and to such a devastating extent because, you know, Houston has the press conferences and Houston had um, the that large area of flooding and it got all of the attraction pretty much. And I just, for me, I want, I'll, I'll keep kind of doing what I'm doing on Twitter for quite a while because I um, I know how this goes, and here in a few days, um, as the waters recede even further, which also is a problem because now it's trapped in by the same things it breached to get in, and uh, in some of these areas, but they they are they are just at the very beginning of this. Um, the first the first step was dealing with the danger and evacuation and rescues. Um, the next step is the danger of going home and what those, you know, buildings, homes, 
everything looks like and how compromised they are if they're still standing. And then the third thing is clean up and the fourth thing is rebuild. And then finally you get back to real life for them in some sort of way, which means a lot of businesses won't ever come back because that's too long of a process to work through, especially when everybody around you is going through it too. So uh, this is a long, long road and we're at the very beginning of it. I mean, Port Arthur just stopped flooding overnight at like 4 a.m. They had three more feet of water, which no one knows about, but they got three more feet of water because they had to release the dam. So the dam didn't break. So they had to do controlled releases of three and it would add to about three feet of water in that area. So they still were dealing with dire flooding last night. It was still raining there yesterday, even though it wasn't raining in Houston anymore. It's just the beginning and it's it's going to be really hard and people are going to forget because the mainstream media is not going to be covering this 24 seven like they did during the hurricane. Yeah, and that's that's going to be when the hard part starts is when some of the media coverage goes away. You know what? I just realized we've been kind of on a bit of a tear, so we've missed the mark for the break. So we need, <laughs> we need to take that real quick. We'll be back here in about four minutes. Stay tuned. Oops, if I hit the right button. I will not fall. I will not fade. I will take your breath away. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 
Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. All right, folks, welcome back. We are live. This is Jen and Nick. We're coming to you live from KLRNRadio.com, where liberty and reason still reign. Again, remember, next week, we, as far as I know, are going down to Thursdays only at 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, and, of course, we have J.D. and Stacy on, of Game On joining us. As far as I know, I still need to confirm just so I can be 100% sure, but I could have swore they said the first Tuesday after Labor Day, which would technically be this coming Tuesday, so I guess I need to find out for sure. But anyway, for those of you uh, hiding under a rock, we have a three-day weekend coming soon and tomorrow's friday so can we just get to it now okay so anyway we're back we're live and uh we're gonna continue talking about houston and i think we're gonna uh, change topics a bit and start talking about ways that some of you guys out there that have been wanting to find a way to help but you may not necessarily be in texas and you're not sure what to do we have some information for you and i'm gonna let jen take over again because she knows the info (laughs) (laughs) okay definitely uh so there's a there's some that i want to highlight on but i'd like to tell everybody that they can go to texastribune.org and uh there's a harvey relief um link posted close to the top and uh it's a pretty good kind of um kind of put everything together what to do as a victim what to do as someone who wants to donate if you want to volunteer time where you can go and what you can do but um it also has a lot of really good sources for donating actual money um and some of it go breaks down into some of the more uh locale specific things and for specific types of things but um so that's texastribune.org and then their article um with all of that info uh bullet pointed out pretty nicely for you is um on the main page so also um the greater houston community foundation has set up the hurricane harvey relief fund um and that's one that the mayor um has worked is working with so that's another one that you can go to that you know that your money is going to actual harvey relief because here's the problem um we all know there's going to be scammers and things like that of course so very like definitely be careful about that if you're going to donate to a family on gofundme or anything like that um really read the fine print and if you are skeptical at all you can always contact um gofundme or in or whichever kind of crowd giving site that you do um, and they will uh, their customer service will respond to you about any of your concerns or questions so please do that before you just start giving to anybody that claims that they were affected because unfortunately there are a lot of people out there that are willing to um, lie cheat and steal and they want your money so um, but we all have probably heard at this point about J.J. Watts and his flood charity that he started, which is now over $10 million, which is so incredible. That's a really good one. It's going to go directly to not only relief right now, but it is going to help with um, whatever they have left. And as people continue to pour money into it, they are going to help with the cleanup and rebuild as well. So that's really good. Um, for immediate needs, I would say um, some of the best things to do is to contact um, the um, the Houston SBCA, to contact Austin Pets Alive, um, the Houston Humane Society. These places are all taking 
cash donations on their site. They're also taking some supply donations like Austin Pets Alive has a huge list right at the, you know, right when you click on their Harvey link, it's got a huge list of things they need. And some of them are things you can Amazon to them. They need crates, they need bowls, they need leashes, you know, stuff like that. So you could, if you want to know exactly what you're spending your money on, you can actually go on there because they're taking in so many rescues and so many displaced animals. Um, some of which will get to go back home eventually, but there's no home to go to right now. So there, um, but you, if you want to know that I bought five crates for dogs, then that's, that was my contribution, or I bought six bags of science diet. You can do that. You can do that directly right there. They tell you where to send it and how, how to do that. And you can do that through Amazon or, you know, even your own way of mailing through FedEx or, or UPS. I just know that Amazon is, um, typically a one day delivery here in Austin. So if you order, it'll take from a warehouse right by and get it to them immediately. Um, some of the other things that you can do that people don't always think about is uh, the Texas Diaper Bank. There are so many kids and even adults that need, a di that need diapers um, and the supplies that go along with it. And the Texas Diaper Bank has um, branches in each of the major cities, but a lot of those cities that need the stuff, their branches aren't operational right now. So you could go to the main site, the, the Texas uh, Diaper Bank, the San Antonio Diaper Bank, the Austin Diaper Bank, or the Dallas-Fort Worth Diaper Bank. They are all getting constant. They're all packaging and having things ready and getting it constantly in shifts over to the areas that need it. Um, a lot of the local food banks in the area are closed and they desperately need food, especially along the close coast and the Port Arthur, um, Beaumont, and then leading down into the Port Aransas, Rockport areas. So um, the best thing you can do there is you can go to feedingtexas.org um, or you can look up the local food banks in other areas like the Corpus Christi Food Bank did open today, the Houston Food Bank did open today, um, and they are gonna be helping assist those needs in those areas too. So um, right now, some of those areas are so devastated. I mean, there really is a food shortage. And so if you want to help by directly feeding Texans that are being affected by this, go to feedingtexas.org or any one of the local affiliate branches. Um, I will tell you though that the ones along the coast are mostly closed. Corpus did reopen, but most of them are closed. Um, Samaritan's Purse is absolutely awesome for this kind of thing. Um, they are doing a direct Harvey relief fund. If you go to their site, you can see it. And all of that money is going directly to Harvey. Um, they've got very little overhead. Uh, they've just got excellent ratings about it and they have already been hands-on and donated so much. The Salvation Army is the same way, uh, so that's a really good one to be able to do. Um, and then a lot of the um, church organizations, uh, the Catholic Charities USA, uh, you can look up, if you just want to look up local churches in the area, a lot of them already have links up on sites for ways in which you can give and they're helping their communities. And uh, again, just make sure that it's reputable. You want to look up that their ad physical address matches what's on, you know, Google. You want to see that there's actually articles about them, that they are a legit organization, but uh, they, they, and you can also go, um, you know, check them on charity navigation, charitynavigator.org um, is a good way to check and see if anything's real. Then uh, the last couple of things I want to talk about is if you don't have money and, you know, it, or, or you, budget's tight and you um, can't really ship stuff and you're not in the area and you can't go down there, there's one other really, really important thing that you can do that doesn't cost anything, and that's give blood. So, um, in the Austin area, actually, on Friday, and I know we have a couple people that listen from Austin, on Friday, Fasten is our local ride share service, and Fasten is giving free rides for anybody to um, go give blood. So that's really cool, and I think that they were trying to organize with other ride share companies to do the same in other areas. But um, in general, even if you're not in uh, Texas at all, and if you are in Texas, go to the Central Texas Blood Bank, We Are Blood is an organization that does all of that kind of stuff. But if you're national, you can go to the, you can donate blood to the Red Cross. Um, and they have places pretty much anywhere with an urban population. So that's a really great thing to do. They've had to transport a lot of patients out of hospitals from there to other areas, which are now getting depleted of their sources. And so the Red Cross Blood Bank will make sure that it gets to where it needs to go. And then the last ones that I want to talk about are ones that people don't always think of, and that is um, the first responders and the volunteers and the rescuers. And um, 
the, those people, the volunteers and rescuers are getting quite a bit of love from local businesses and things, but the first responders we often don't think about, and a lot of these people are out there, especially in Houston, and they lost their homes. Over 200 Houston officers were saving other people from the floods as their own life went up in water, <laughs> basically. And there are a couple of things to do with that. Jesse Kelly, who's been awesome during this entire thing, he's paired up with Sean Parnell, and um, they are taking donations uh, to help first responders with through the American Warrior Initiative. And then uh, the New Braunfels Police Department is uh, launched a campaign called Undies, uh, U-N-D-I-E-S, and what they're doing. And you can ship them stuff, or if you're in the area, you can go to them with stuff. And they're taking in things like socks and underwear, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, and uh, they're taking shipments directly to uh, anybody that's involved in the rescue efforts that needs it. That's one of the things apparently that is, and I remember this from when my parents had a house fire, like you underestimate those essentials. You underestimate a dry pair of socks and a clean pair of underwear. And so they're taking kind of toiletry type necessities and then socks, underwear, and, and clean t-shirts um, to first responders over in the areas that are that are affected. And I think people really need to understand that there have been a lot of businesses that have stepped up in a huge way. Um, as of, I think as of yesterday, there were 52 companies that had donated at least a million, um, totaling to about 113 million. Walmart has done 20 million in cash. That doesn't include the almost 40 million that they've done in supplies to specific areas. And I actually watched last night on Twitter as Walmart Help responded to a girl who said, hey, this area needs this and we're not getting any contact. We can't get anybody to answer us. Can you help? Because the Beaumont water system went down. And they said, this was for a civic, for a civic center that was a um, uh, shelter. And they were about to evacuate everybody from the shelter because they had no running water, which doesn't just mean they can't drink. It means that the systems don't work. And they had, um, they were low on food and, and they had no drinkable water at all. And so they were about to figure out where to take all these other people. And Walmart responds to the girl who has 55 or 150 followers. I can't remember, but it was a low follower account and says, um, yes, I'm going to DM you, you know, blah, 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 we'll get supplies on the way. And then about six hours later, responded and said, um, wanted you to know that this many pallets of this, this many pallets of that, 952 trucks total came with this and this and that. They're set up with all the assistance they need, and we've got more coming on the way. And then it came out that they helped organize to get them porta potties there so that they could still house these people in the shelter that they've been in for the last several days. So they're just Home Depot, HEB, um, Waterburgers, and so Verizon donated a bunch of money. Lowe's, Lowe's and Home Depot are really going to come in big with the rebuild, with the cleanup and rebuild. Um, they've already pledged to put teams on the ground, and um, it so and 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 they're somewhat familiar with this. They they get deployed to various areas for things like this when um, when any natural disaster happens in an area. But it's the people have been great, the businesses have been great, the local businesses are so many great stories coming out of there, like bakeries that were basically flooded in on any side and they didn't have anything else to do and the power's going out so they're going to lose all their products so they just started baking bread and that way when they were able to get out they handed it out to everybody for free um there's so many little stories like that of in within these communities that's just so inspiring and it's been so wonderful to watch and also hats off to um Governor Abbott, just the state of Texas, the way that we've had this set up, the infrastructure that's set up in Houston and otherwise, you can never prepare for a storm like this, but it, or you can't prepare enough for a storm like this, but the, the planning, the city planning, the state planning, and the community's abilities to kind of roll with the punches on this really and then jump in and do anything needed and being willing to uh, be directed and organized in a in a in an efficient manner has made all the difference in this and it's really been just so amazing that uh this was not worse than it was it could have been such a devastation and in many places that were less prepared it has been
And by many play, I mean in the past, past hurricanes. <laughs> so it's just been really great to see. And I, I hope that people will kind of keep keep it in the back of their mind in the weeks and months to come as they continue to rebuild. And I know that you know how that goes because that's what happens with tornadoes too. It's the big news. It's the big thing. And then the cameras pack up and leave and you're basically forgotten and abandoned. Yeah, no, and then that, that's kind of how it goes. You know, it's, it's everybody swoops in while it's big news and then everybody goes home and you're left to clean up the mess. Fun times, fun times. Yeah, it, it's really sad. And I know that there are people that still bring light to it. And that's why I'm, you know, that'll be something that I do. And it is my people. It is close enough to my area. And I have I have lots of people there that have been affected and lots of people I know that are helping. And um, so I'll continue to remind and continue to share out my links. I actually said yesterday, hey, I know some of you may be sick of all my Harvey stuff, but um, sometimes things are more important. So mute me if you have to, because I've basically been a nonstop feed of sharing. I mean, like just yeah. even tonight, I was like, oh, the Elks Lodge is opening Katie for dinner, you know, for, for first responders and flood victims, go, go, go. And like shared it. And it, because I'm in this little network now of Harvey relief people, you know, it got shared immediately, really quickly. People like, oh my gosh, I'll go there now. Didn't know what I was going to do tonight, you know? So I'll probably be doing that for quite a while. So I apologize to all my political follows if they're annoyed with that. Mute, mute my hashtags or something. <laughs> yeah, f them if they can't take it for a few for a bit. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's how I feel. But whatever. All right, so we are officially just about out of time. So why don't you remind folks where it is that they can hang out with you when you're not on the radio hanging out with me? Unless, of course, they're tired of your Harvey tweets and then they probably don't want to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you. Come find me on Twitter at Jay Homestead. Uh, follow me on Facebook, JR Homestead. And then uh, join Misfits Politics uh, tomorrow night for Mischief, Misfit Mischief. I can't even say it right. My brain is fried. Anyways, and check out MisfitsPolitics.com. So I have to ask, because you realize that you've done pretty much this whole hour with me like saying something like twice. So when are you gonna, <laughs> when are you, you going to just take off the training wheels and do a show? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm you not know always just together. <laughs> you know you could do it. You've been doing it. You've been doing the show with me now for a year. You could do one. You could do a solo. <laughs> well, I'll think about it. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Oh, okay. I... Jess was tweeting to me, and she asked if I could believe that some bleep had called her out and I said she was an idiot for ending her show on taps for the fallen soldiers. I thought she was like including the person who said it and I was going to be like, okay, we'll go get them now. <laughs> but she didn't. Uh. So anyway. All right. So on that note, folks, we are officially out of time. Uh, due to a contractual obligation with a new sponsor who was actually supposed to do an interview with me this evening, but we both had things come up, there will be a replay of a recent interview I've done with the uh, managing director of Liberty HealthShare, Mr. Del Bellis. If you haven't heard it yet, I do encourage you to tune in and check it out. We'll have that up as a live stream here in just a few minutes, and it'll be going out to the rest of the affiliates tomorrow for America Off the Rails. This will be the last show for us this week. Um, and the last show before Labor Day, I don't think I'm taking the Monday off because, you know, I'll already be off from the day job and I'll have other station stuff that I hope to be getting done that day. And right now my business partner's looking at me like, you damn well better be doing that stuff because you told me you were going to pay. But anyway, <laughs> so on that note, we are officially out for the night. I want to remind you guys, look, if you're, if you're not sure what to do, then she already told you where to follow along. Go find Jen on Twitter. She will give you all the information you need about anywhere that you can donate or where you can go to help or whatever whatever you Absolutely. whatever you want to do to to help make your mark uh, to help people with the things that are going on in Houston right now with Harvey and all throughout uh, the Texas uh, the, that area right now. Then I do encourage you to do so, and that's why we basically gave her the hour because I'm I'm tired of ranting about politics when people are dying in floodwaters, you know. And Ron brought up some, Ron brought up something. He's like, I promise, I'm not trying to be funny, but I have a question because you know when the when when floods like that start happening, you know there's alligators in that water. Yes. Yes, and there have actually been some issues with that. Uh, some people that were able to leave their home, theoretically because it was about knee high, that then spotted multiple gators and thought, 
waited a little bit thinking they'd move along their way and instead they came closer into their actual porch area of their backyard and thought and that was the way they needed to get out and thought this ain't good <laughs> and they ended up getting rescued by boat but yeah there have been reports of that and that's kind of freaky all right well i do hope you guys enjoy the rest of your night remember we are almost to friday so just buckle up and if we can make it through tomorrow a lot of us have a three-day weekend i know some of you in texas right now are like shut up about three-day weekends i'm underwater <laughs> Anyway, love to everybody that's going through the Harvey thing. And if we can do anything to help, reach out at Rick at KLRMRadio.com. Whatever you need, we will find a way to try to make it happen, even if I got to connect with whoever I can find to try to get it done. I can't say we can get anything and everything done, but we're damn sure going to try. You guys have a great night. Take care. God bless. Tomorrow.